Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have two wines in front of me. I have two Chilean wines in front of me. I have two Colchagua wines in front of me. I have two Montes Colchagua wines. I have two Montes Colchagua Cabernet Sauvignons in front of me. What's the difference? Um, well, they're different vintages, 2011 and 2012. And the reason I've got them side by side, I thought it'd be uh, interesting to try them uh, next to each other. Uh, 2011, uh, Chile is, um, I mean, it, it's been described as a viticultural paradise. The sun shines, it's, not, it's, uh, it's dry, there's not much fungal diseases. And if you need to, uh, if your vines get a bit thirsty, there's all this lovely snow that's melting on the Andes, flowing down and plenty of water for irrigation which is what they've done in 2011, they'll, they'll, they've used irrigation. 2012, first vintage they've tried uh, without irrigation. Let's see what the difference is. Um, so 2011, uh, give it that a whirl first. So yes, Montes, Alpha, Cabernet Sauvignon 2011, called Chagua, um, and they're both the same price. Uh, give it a whirl. Really classy, classic Chilean nose, black currant pastels. There's also a, a slight herby uh, an overtone here. There's plumminess as well. Sometimes when you get that, uh, there's the black currant pastel and there's nothing else, but maybe there's a, a bit of rubbery metallic reduction going on there. Here, it doesn't seem to suffer from that problem. Uh, and there are other nuances going uh, going on there as well. But it's one of those flavors, uh, one of those aromas certainly that um, is uh, just puts you in mind of chili. Firm, ripe, fleshy, lots of wine there, um, and um, there's a slight, what I call a desiccation to uh, some of the fruit flavours, as if some of the fruit had gone just that little bit overripe, and the, the grape skins had started to shrivel, um, and um, when you get that, you get this slightly baked character coming through. It's, not, it's there in the background rather than taking centre stage, so it's not, uh, it's not intruding too much, but I, 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 do, I do notice that there. I like it. Uh, but um, uh, it, yes, it still feels on the young side. I'd like to see some of those uh, it, it, it mellow into its bottle. Uh, but I'm just wondering with that baked edge there, uh, what it's going to be like when it mellows. I'm just wondering whether uh, maybe I, I would have preferred the fruit to be picked slightly earlier. Hey. And I notice oak as well. There's a slightly drying uh, edge of, um, of, of, of French oak. Anyway, on, on to the 2012. So this is the um, unirrigated. Uh, one, uh, let's see what the difference is. Well, one of the differences before I even taste it is, um, I mean, it's not a huge difference. First one's 13.5 alcohol, this one's 14%. What happens when you uh, don't irrigate is uh, that the grapes don't swell up with water as much, so they, there's, uh, you get less juice out of them and more concentrated flavours, which probably goes some way to explaining the, uh, um, the extra half a percent alcohol, but you get vintage variation like that, and uh, anyway, I'll get my nose into it. Still got the black currant pastels, um, and uh, still got a little bit of the plumminess, and again that slight um, edge of oak. Um, what I seem to notice, if there's any uh, any differences, um, there's this uh, that plum character. Um, it feels a little bit more uh, less on the baked side, and more on the rounded, fleshy, uh, and uh, yeah, ju yeah, juicy, ever so just ever so slightly cooked plum, but not not baked and uh, and shriveled up. Interesting. Um, there is this uh, more of a savoury, salty character going on there. People talk about minerality, and it may be that um, uh, because the first one, um, the the vines have thought, "Oh, I need a drink." Oh, there's some irrigation water there. Let's just chop that up. And on the second one, uh, it thinks, "Oh, I need a drink. I need to get my roots down into uh, in, down as deep as they can." And maybe um, there is something that is coming up there that is much more of the soil rather than from the melting snow from the Andes. Um, I prefer it. it, it I mean, it's, it's half a half a percent higher, but I don't get that baked edge that I was getting in in the first one. Strange, because you'd think that uh, if if something is starting to shrivel up, that would be the one that you'd notice the desiccation more. But it may be that because um, there was that the, the grapes were actually smaller, they, they maybe ripened a little bit earlier, and you didn't need to leave the grapes out there as long to develop their flavours. 
Um, but an interesting contrast. And uh, I mean, of course, if you're if you're doing something like this, it's it's a bit on the edge because Chile is a, a lot of where they grow grow the uh, the grapes. Uh, it's it's not far off being a desert. Um, and maybe they'll be able to do it every year. Maybe there'll be some years when the vines are just going oh, feed me, feed me, feed me. And um, but um, it means that if they if they're using less water here, uh, maybe they can then pass that on and use less water in other of their projects. Um, and, or if, there, if, if, if water availability gets to be a problem, uh, and Chile's not, uh, in, 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 there's no shortage of water, but there is shortage of water in, uh, in many other parts of the wine world. If grapes that have been, uh, uh, th you think, oh yeah, they need irrigating, they need irrigating. If projects like this show that maybe the grapes don't need irrigating, or don't need irrigating as much as, um, uh, as has been the, the case in the past, uh, then that's less water resources used, which is uh, good for everybody. Hey, see you soon.